Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this evening. It is an amazing event. My beautiful fiance and I are very proud to be part of this evening. Um, as I was introduced, I am your current WRBL News 3 This Morning anchor. So for those of you who wake up very early with me, rise and shine, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. This is way past my current bedtime. And as it was mentioned, I was the sports anchor at WRBL and still sports fan. So for you dogs in the building, congratulations. Dogs win 2014 over South Carolina. Admittedly, I was also watching the game. I gotta be honest, that first half, let's hope we get things right by the second half. For you Georgia Tech fans, you know, I hope things go well in Oxford. Currently down 10 nothing to Ole Miss, but you know, hey, things, things can turn it around. But overall, um, I am tremendously honored to be here. As a Filipino, in my world, there's not a lot of us there. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a very proud son of two Filipino parents. My father is what he would describe as a country boy from Nayib Kalite. And any chance my mom gets to brag about Davao City, I promise you she will. So the theme of tonight really struck home with me, to be very proud of being Filipino. I grew up overseas. My dad is a, has a good degree in engineering, so I grew up in Saudi Arabia. But as a Filipino, I found myself a lot of the time in a classroom. Any athletic team I was a part of or anyone I was hanging out with, I was usually the only one. So while unique, it also led to the opportunities to kind of feel isolated and sometimes mocked. When I told people that I was Filipino, they'd be like, cool, so what's that? <laughs> what exactly is a Filipino? I'm like, well, it's a country in Asia, I tell you, but they're like, okay, so you're not Chinese? <laughs> no. There was, at that time, in my formative years growing up in the 90s and early 2000s, that's when I tried to find something to kind of latch on to, try and find something that my friends would think were cool. So that led to, whew, the ugly duckling phase. Um, and that time, wearing like Chinese characters on your t-shirts or hats was really cool, or even getting tattoos of Chinese symbols on you that you thought meant honor, but really meant wet noodle. And then, there's this whole AZN phase. If you want to Google it, it meant a lot of hair gel, a lot of bad dancing on my part, and yeah, just really bad. I tried to get highlights in my hair. I thought they would turn out blonde. We got uh, jet black hair, turns out orange. So I was searching for something to be proud of as we all do. Even something among my Asian peers, I had Chinese friends, Japanese friends, Korean friends, but they always said that, you know, Filipinos are just a little different. Just a little different from your Chinese friends and Japanese friends. And then having a last name like Castillo, which in, among your Hispanic friends is Castillo, they're like, okay, so your last name is Castillo, so you're Mexican. <laughs> okay, no. I don't speak fluent Spanish. I don't have a lot of Hispanic traditions in my home. Yes, I'm Asian with a Hispanic last name. There's a whole history. You can Google that, I promise you. <laughs> yeah, so I like a lot of the same cuisines that my Asian friends have. I was not really Hispanic, even though in the summer, dark wrecks come really, really, really brown, and I think I'm Mexican. No, it's, it's a lot. There I was, the cross-section of cultures, the strange blend of Asian, American, and Hispanic cultures from the outside. People kept wondering, what box do I put you in? Like seriously, what box do I put you in? And then you have these cultural dancing with sticks and benches and <laughs> your food's covered in sauce a little bit. It's, it's weird, it's, what box do I put you in? It took me some time, but then I realized, just because I don't fit in any of their boxes is not my problem. They just haven't been open to the eyes of what we have as a Filipino culture. It's not a me problem, it's a them problem. I get the opportunity to teach them. That is something so beautiful that you get a chance to do as a part of the Filipino culture that gives you every day. Again, how do people usually figure my family out from the rest? I won't lie to you, my titos and titas are usually a little loud, They're usually a little louder back there, but we're a passionate people. We're an enthusiastic people. Believe me, you will find my mom and dad usually somewhere in the back yelling. That's where I get to be the loud guy. That's the trait that was passed down to me. And I'm very proud of that. <coughs> People also want to talk about finding a family and culture amongst the friends and, friends and family, right? Well, think about that. In the Filipino culture, you address people like Kuya, Ate, Tito, Tita. It's the basic foundation of our, our culture. We're one big family. 
Now, for, all, for a lot of people in this room, I'm your clear Rex. Even for some of you, I'm your Tito Rex. I've got to embrace the fact that I'm getting older. <laughs> and then there's amazing traditions like Monaco. I know for a lot of you, once you get Monaco, it's a signature of I'm getting older. I know, I get it. But even for me, when I was younger, I would see my older people's Tito's, or my Lola, my Lola. And I would be almost scared to do it. I would absolutely encourage you to do these traditions in public and be proud of them. Yes, they might be an opportunity for some people to jack you, but that's a teaching moment. Continue to be an ambassador of your culture. Now, if you want to show people a good time, I promise you bring your non-Filipino friends to any event. FAA events are going to be fun. I haven't been to a lot of them. Tita, I promise you I will put a lot of your events on my calendar because yes, I want to eat a lot of good food. <laughs> but bring them to like a house party. Bring them to a big group. Bring them to a Christmas party. They will have an absolute blast. Anytime my parents cooked up a double and panza, I thought I'd be eating leftovers for like three or four days. Now, when my friends came over, when my American friends came over, it was all gone that night. I barely got it. <laughs> now, speaking to the Filipinos that were born in the United States, much like myself, take some time to speak to your titos, titas, and your parents who immigrated to the United States. If you want a serious dose of inspiration, do that. My father, Grew up in the Philippines, he graduated with two engineering degrees. But he also grew up in a time when the Philippines was under martial law. Not an easy time. So, for a better life for myself and my family, he wanted to immigrate to the United States. Hawaii was his first stop. Unfortunately, when he applied for any engineering position, they looked at his resume, saw that it was from the Makua Institute of Technology. He also loved saying he was from MIT here in the US and got a shot people. But, it would be an instant moment of hesitation. Oh, you didn't graduate from an American university. Well, we really can't hire you. I'm sorry, this, this institution's not here in the US. It's not an American accredited degree. I'm sorry, we can't hire you. For those of you at the tail end of your degree or who have graduated with your degree, I busted my tail to get my degree. So, could you imagine how frustrating that would be? to go to an employer, like, I went to a university, I don't know what to tell you, I did it, I did the work. But because it's not from a school within our own borders, it doesn't count. So instead of being understandably frustrated, sour, and mad, he did the one thing he knows how to do, and he taught me, work hard. And that's something I promise you, a lot of you younger people in the crowd, that a lot of your adults in this room can also attest to. Working hard is a very big Filipino trait. Don't apologize for it. Then my father eventually became a US citizen, learned how to speak English better, and became the most reliable member of his engineering team through other certifications. He also likes to credit a lot of his gray hairs to me, which I don't like. <laughs> my mother also followed a very similar professional path to Filipinos. She's a nurse. So when I tell you when you look for Filipinos, they are everywhere, especially in a hospital. But like many before her, my mom took a job overseas so she could take care of her family back home. That is something that has always amazed me. When, look, I won't lie, money is my bank account. First thing I want to do is make sure my bills are taken care of. But my mom always looked out for her, for her family. She has become the absolute source of strength for our family and for our family back at home. So from an engineer and a nurse, somehow this guy ended up on TV. <laughs> I won't lie to you, this career has, uh, has really thrown my parents to boot. Why do you want to be on TV? They bought ESPN, I watched it too much, I watched a lot of Sports Center. I'm sorry mom and dad, I love you guys, but I'm not going back to my engineering degree. Now, this job has allowed me to cover a lot of amazing things. Uh, national championships, got to cover the dogs a lot, got to cover the Georgia, Georgia Tech football a lot, got to cover amazing athletes. I, Cover your ears, Georgia fans. I did go to Auburn quite a bit, and right, but I did was able to cover athletes like Sumi Lee, cover teams that won national championships, Final Four teams, College World Series teams. Spoken to incredible people like Skip Anderson in our in, in our own city. But the one thing that has always kept me grounded and kept me going were the lessons that were taught to me by my mother and father. Work hard, be respectful, be reliable be responsible, and always keep family first. I'm honored to be the morning news anchor for this community, but I'm also so thankful that my station in this community has embraced me. 
I want everyone in here to also realize that because this community has embraced me as an on-air personality, they also embrace you. You are a wonderful organization. You have a, for everyone who's involved in this, especially no matter what age, you have a village of people around you that can support you through anything. I want you to realize that's not the case for a lot of Filipinos everywhere. But I will tell you, like I said before, you can find Filipinos everywhere. Look for them, support them, and be supportive of each other. If you want, again, take a look around this room, everybody. If you want some inspiration, just talk to them. Just talk to people here who have gone through so much. Hospitality forces another part of our culture. My mom would welcome anyone from any walk of life into our home. And I, new rule, if you are new to this, if you ever walk into a Filipino home and don't eat, oh. ew, look, just bite, just take one bite of something, I promise you. It'll probably be good, and you won't regret it. But that hospitality has also allowed me to open up my own heart and my own ability to speak with anyone from any walk of life. I introduced you to my future wife, Brittany, earlier this evening. One, she's clearly out of my leap, so I'm doing everything I can to, to be out of your graces. And two, while she's not Filipino, she has enthusiastically and willingly embraced our culture and what we're about. It's that warmth that my parents taught me about being hospitable and respectful that allowed us to open up that door and allowed us to create a life that we're gonna hopefully be very proud of. I'll, I'll do my part, I promise. I'll make the bed, I promise. Now, that is, those characteristics have allowed me to chase down my dreams and meet the woman that I couldn't even dream of. As Filipinos, you have plenty to be proud of. Never run away from what makes you, you. Again, just because you're different, that doesn't give anyone a right to throw you away. Just because you don't fit into a certain box, that doesn't mean they have a right to throw you away. Be the one who opens up the door. I strive to be the best that I can be, and the best I can be is firmly Filipino and the lessons that were taught to me by my Filipino parents. I'm the proud son of two Filipino immigrants, and I'm proud to be your WRBL News lead this morning. Anchor, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. For your time.